Now then, Maddie or Mildred, come at me. And there she is. And since we're going to be resting in the bonfire after this to begin with, why not? Why not fool around with a magic weapon of doom? Want some of this, Mildred? Come at me. Ooh, failed parry. Failed jump attack. Ooh, get owned. Do you want some of this, Mildred? Now, like I told you in, in, one of the, in one of the previous episodes, considering that the butchers in the depths are actually females, could you consider that this is actually one of those female butchers since she has a sack? You wonder. And she's called Maneater, and the butchers in the um, the butchers in the that zone in the depths, they they were actually gonna eat Laurentius from the Great Swamp, the the pyromancer dude. So you gotta wonder: is she one of those before she got um, all muted into the that muscle-bound grotesque form? Could be. Could be. I wonder if the butcher's uh, knife description can actually shed some light on this. Let's see what it says. Uh, butcher's knife. Giant butcher knife wielded by the undead man-eating cook. Lurking in the depths. More a tool for subduing and preparing life catches than an actual weapon. Those who have faced this deadly blade have a deeper sense of how helpless prey must feel. So as you can see, undead man-eating cook lurking in the depths. Yeah, she's definitely connected to those guys. Not sure if this is uh, news to you guys, but to me it kind of is. I never really connected man-eater Mildred with uh, those dudes. So yeah. While we're here, we might as well take a little trip uh, to the uh, Great Hollow, get the Chlorinthi Ring. For those of you who still don't know how to get it, it's that. And because the Chlorinthi Ring is an item we definitely want. So let's just go through here. Um, I like going through the entirety of the swamp, uh, getting most of the items that you can find. Like, there's an item over there. I think it's a soul or something, but it doesn't really matter. I just, like, like I told you guys, I like picking up all the items. Now, it's actually easier uh, to come here after the Rusted Ring, and a lot of people go do, the, um, go do the Northern Asylum before they come here because of that, but it's not a big deal. Because, I mean, yeah, sure, you got this poison and whatnot, but still, not a big deal. Do, 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 do. Uh, what do we have here? We got a leech over there. These leeches drop, if I'm not mistaken, they drop large Titanite shards, which are actually useful because we're going to be upgrading... Uh, this weapon to as much as we possibly can once we get the opportunity. Uh, but I don't feel like farming right now. I might farm off camera again if I um, if I'm missing large titanite shards or something. As well as I'm not going to be farming the crystal lizards in the Great Hollow simply because that's really boring to do on camera. But I do want to go at least get the chlorinthy ring. Oh leeches. Oh wow, that thrusting attack, <laughs> that's actually really, really good to deal with leeches. Pretty neat, meaty little things. Snap! Oh sweet, see, large titanite shards, just like I told you. They also drop green titanite shards. These guys are really good for farming if, if you need shards of either green titanite or large titanite. They're pretty decent. But uh, there's a better hallway in the depths, like right next to the bonfire. That is also a really good location if you're looking for both these types of materials. But if you really want those greenies, those green titanite shards, these guys, e every time you get a drop in these guys from green titanite shards, I believe they drop them five at a time, if I'm not mistaken. So 
It's pretty sweet. This is also where you get the server sort, in case that's something that you guys have always wanted. Which, it's something that I've never really seen being used, to be honest. What the hell? Stupid locking. Get in there. And this is a, another large type night shard. The thing over there at the bottom is the server sword, so if you want to get it, that's where you need to go. Me personally, I don't want it, so I'm going to skip this section. Just going to move on to the uh, Great Hollow. just wanted to kill these leeches because they're after me. Why are you guys after me? Leave me alone. Jesus. I usually kill them all and go and get the sword, but eh, I just don't feel like it, to be honest, today. But um, now let's get into the Great Hollow. Which is, again, the zone that I'm not a big fan of. I mean, it's cool that they did that one zone that a lot of people actually miss uh, in the first playthrough. I personally missed it. It's just, again, it, it all goes down to secrets. Earlier today, I was doing a commentary on Darksiders 2 and how it's nice that they've added some secret stuff that I've noticed. Uh, and that is just something that I really like. And, I mean, this all comes um, kind of after... Um, ENB himself said that he loves the, the secret stuff, but uh, yeah, it's, it's just cool to, to be rewarded for exploration and whatnot. So yeah, the reason I came down here is because there's either a green type knight shard or a large shard or something in here. Oh yeah, see? Five green type knight shards off that one leech. So yeah, if you're farming for green type knight shards and you need really massive amounts of green tide night shards, it doesn't get a whole lot better than here. I also might get Quillax Fury Sword. I'm not sure if that's something that ENB tends to use. I'm not sure exactly what um, what he uses to go into the painted world to deal with uh, those uh, toxic dudes. But me personally, I like running around with a fire weapon, and the Quillax Fury Sword is still a really cool fire weapon, no matter how you paint it, because it actually scales with dexterity, so that's really good. Also scales with humanity. That's really good. There's just a lot of scaling on that sword, and it's a and it's a good sword overall. So that's something to uh, to think about. So now let's go down here. Let's go down this letter. This ladder. Letter. <laughs> uh, pronouncing ladder. Okay. Let's light this bonfire. Hopefully, let's spend some souls because we might just die here. I hate dying here. It's really annoying, but yeah, it happens. So let's just get some endurance and some more dexterity. Keep that dexterity going. And now let's. Uh, oh, actually, I don't have. You don't have to jump down there unless you're going for the crystal lizards. Anyway, I, sh I should just tell you guys, kind of a good route to go if you want to farm uh, crystal lizards. So here it is. Here's what you gotta do. Let me actually equip the bow and I'll drop some arrows in for you guys so that you guys can see kind of the points of interest if you're looking to farm um, crystal lizards. And the reason why I say farm crystal lizards even though they don't respawn is because you can get, you have to reload a whole bunch of times for those of you who never did it. But here's the thing. First thing, you gotta jump down to that log over there. Okay? Once you're done jumping to that log, you can roll there. It's, it's pretty easy. It's a pretty easy jump. You go all the way up through here, then through here, and from there, like somewhere in there, you will jump to this log. And from this log, you will jump to this platform. And from this platform, you can just run through the whole thing, it will go inside, and it will come out uh, somewhere inside this log over there. And there, you can like farm five or six crystal lizards there. Once you're done there, come back to the bonfire. After you get back to the bonfire, once again, jump down that log, go up, go through here, and when you get here, to this point, you're gonna jump down here, and you can farm two or three more, I'm not 100% sure, down this tunnel here. And then there's a couple of more spread out, but this is the big load right here, if you wanna go farm um, for um, for those bad boys. And then there's the Chloranthy Ring, which we're gonna pick up right now, if I don't mess this up. So let's try not to mess this up. Because if I mess this up, probably gonna die. And dying is not fun. So let's just, we perfect. Lost a whole bunch of health, but 
we did get to the ring. And now that we've got the ring, let's get the hell out of here. If I can even remember how to get the hell out of here. I'm not going to be picking up anything else from, um, from Great Hollow. If you want to go through the Great Hollow, be my guest. It's just, I don't like the, this, this, this section that much. It's not a very good section to do commentary on because it's just jumping down, constantly jumping down until you get to Ash Lake. Uh, Ash Lake. Ash Lake. And once you get to Ash Lake, you fight the Hydra and whatnot. And you, ha you have the whole Dragon Covenant there. I might show you that section later, but I only like going down there when I have the, um, what do you call it, the Lord Vessel, because then I can just port back up, because otherwise you can't port back up and it becomes terrible. But yeah, we've gotten the Chlorinthy Ring, and we can actually switch that baby right now. And we can have both Poise and Chlorinthy Ring. Not exactly sure if uh, ENB ever mentioned why he doesn't like the um, ring of uh, a favor and protection that much. Me personally, I love that ring. It's one of the items that I instantly equip as soon as I get it. So I'm not exactly sure what's up with that. If he just doesn't like it, if he likes using different combinations. That's probably it. He just likes using different combinations of rings. He doesn't like to be dependent on that one ring. So I can understand that. But I just really like having more health and endurance. But like I said, this is an ENB tribute run, and I'm trying to stay as true as possible to his playstyle. So we're gonna try and stick to this. Now, I'm not 100% sure if he summons um, if he summons Maneater Mildred or not. I think he does. So I'm gonna be summoning her. Let's just go through the bonfire here, clear out the poison, and then let's proceed onward to. Quilag, or Kellogg's, as a lot of people like to call her. Although I like eating Kellogg's, so I don't like referring to her as Kellogg's. I mean, then again, a lot of people probably like to eat Kellogg's in Dark Souls. Just the top part, though. <laughs> oh, man. <clears throat> now let's go through here, and uh, yeah, we're gonna get poisoned. So like I don't even care that much. There's another item here, I believe that this is a soul. And there's actually um, an NPC that will spawn there once you kill either Quileg or Ceaseless Discharge. Again, I'm, I don't usually do pyromancies or sorceries or any of that stuff, so I don't usually care. But there is an NPC that spawns over there, and I'm gonna try and make her spawn uh, eventually. I think you just have to have an ascended um, an Ascended Flame from the Pyromancy, which is still going to cost me a pretty penny souls-wise, but um, I'll eventually go and do that. For now, let's go ahead and do the Purple Clomp here. Remove this Poison and summon Maneater Mildred and go straight into Quillig's face and beat her face inside out. Here she is. Also another player in here, but I'm not going to be summoning, summoning players. Because sometimes I summon players and then people get the impression that I don't actually know how to do the boss properly because all I did was summon a player who did most of the work for me, so... I really don't want to... I want to avoid summon players as much as possible. And whoa, I have no idea what happened there, but my game basically crashed as I was uh, crossing the, um, the fog here. So I'm not even sure if we're going to get a cinematic this time around. Sorry about that. It's just... I don't know. It just seems to me that Games for Windows Live just seems to crash my game a whole lot. Like, people who watch my live streams on Dark Souls on twitch.tv slash Rurikon, I mean, the game just crashes a lot. I have no idea why. I think it's related to... Um, I think it's related to uh, Games for Windows Live, but I really don't know. Looks like we're not going to crash this time, though, so that's pretty cool. Yeah. 
HD boobies because that's all that matters. <laughs> uh, it's, this this is actually a, a cool boss fight, and um, it becomes harder if you don't have uh, Manny to Mildred to kind of distract her. If you do have her, it is kind of easier. Let's try to do a little bit of enchanting here, shall we? Quelag, you said you didn't mind that I would enchant my weapon. Here comes the foot stomp. Oh wow, we don't do that much damage with the boulder side sword, do we? Should have enchanted this bad boy before I came here. Here comes the lava. Gonna be trying to do a series of thrusts here. Oh wow! She nailed me! Oh crap! Oof! Tough spot there. Where the hell are you, Mildred? Seriously, you're doing nothing. There we go. Distract her. Poke. Oh crap, we have like almost no vitality, so I do have a couple of problems here. And I have no vitality. Oh crap. Oh, I thought she was gonna shake her ass. When she does the shake her ass animation, it's really bad if you're right behind there, because she will rape your face. Man in a Mildred taking a lot of damage. A little bit of frontal paw action there. Side paw. Side paw? I really shouldn't call it paw. What, what do you call these? Spider legs? Spider leg? What's this? This is a little bit of a frontal animation. Wow, I did almost no damage with that magic weapon. See, that was the ass-shaking one that I was talking about. That is a dangerous run one right there. Whoa! That was coming straight at me. Very nice AI there. She was coming at me. Poke. <laughs> it's just so cool, the, the R2 of this weapon. It's almost unfair. Like, these are like, poke. Oh, missed it. I really like the way your weapon looks when it's uh, enchanted with magic, too. It's like a little lightsaber action going. Jesus. Want to spew any more lava? Wow. She always manages to nail me with that sweeping attack. I mean, this should have been finished a while ago. She hasn't even done her really heavy hit attack, and here it comes. You can usually tell this hit if you're looking at the front of her and she, like, looks like she's hurt. She's hurting the actual witch, not the spider trunk. What the hell? My mouse is moving for some reason. And I couldn't get the camera to move, but, uh, yeah. Pretty sweet. Quick legs down. And man, I really like this playstyle of constantly buffing your weapon. It's something that I've never done before. And you guys might be surprised. Like, what do you mean? You never use sorceries? And no. Just no. I usually just go balls out melee. And I love it. And I'm really enjoying this uh, buff your weapon playstyle. It's a lot of fun. So that is definitely a, a type of build that I would like to eventually take into um, into New Game Plus, a build where you would buff your weapons and buff yourself with power within and whatnot. That's definitely a type of build that I will eventually want to make and take to New Game Plus. Man, cinematics, I mean, the PC version looks so awesome when you're playing it at 1080p, which unfortunately is something that I can't do. A lot of people actually ask me why, why don't I record in 1080p? It's because I can't really use fraps because my computer is not that recent and it just takes quite a bit of a toll when you use fraps so I really have to use these capture cards that compress the video on the fly and just allows me to record and not even have to worry about recording times and I still get a pretty decent uh, file size so that is the main reason why unfortunately I'm still stuck at 720p, but as soon as I get the um, the uh, live gamer HD from Aver Media, I expect that stuff to change for me to be able to actually capture 1080p. Also, for those of you, did I actually bring? Uh, yes, I did. Yay! What do you mean I can't use it? What the hell? Why can't I use this? Don't tell me that I'm offline because of that crash thing. That's just dumb. Really? 
You're not going to let me use this. Okay, it seems that because of the fact that my game crashed earlier, it signed me off of Windows Live, and I was playing offline for a little bit there. But then again, it was a boss fight, so it doesn't really matter that much. So anyways, I like um, writing stuff on these walls to help people out, the newcomers and whatnot. I always like to just go ahead and say, illusory wall. There you go. Actually, that's not, that's not what I type, is it? Usually what I do is... Yeah, ahead. Yeah, that's it. Illusory wall ahead. There we go. So that people know that you can just stab your way through this wall. Meet Quilai's sister. Oh, dear. Yeah, I'm the new servant. You have no eggs. eggs. No matter. Go along and have audience with our fair lady. I pray that you will mind your manners. Will do. <laughs> Get off my face! Now, something that I noticed that uh, ENB is doing is he is going to the new content as low uh, level as possible in, in his current playthrough. And I think that's probably something that I should do as well. Although I'm not very confident about that, but... Uh, oh well. <laughs> because usually what I do when I get to this section is... Um, I just go through here and I quill and I kill a uh, ceaseless discharge. I noticed that he didn't do that in his last uh, playthrough. He just went straight to the new content. So in this playthrough, I'm going to be following in on his example since this is an ENB tribute run and I'm going to be skipping ceaseless discharge. You guys have already seen me kill ceaseless discharge in the uh, cheap way, which is usually the way that most people do it nowadays. Nobody even does the other way around. Um, in this playthrough, I might actually do that just to show you guys what the, the, the normal way, what it looks like, because I haven't done it in a while, but uh, after we go through the new content, not right now. So right now we're going to be heading, um, should we go to Anor Orlando? Because I like having max kindling options before I go to Anor Orlando. So I will probably hit up the catacombs first before going ahead to Anor Orlando, but before we even go to the catacombs, I am going to go and enchant my Baldur side sword to as much as I possibly can. And then we're going to be heading to the catacombs simply because I like having that kindling option. I'm not sure if that's uh, something that he does, but I like having 20 potions on me because again, this is a dexterity playthrough, so I'm going to be making a lot of mistakes and the more potions you have, the more that stuff helps. So let's go ahead and uh, kill off this dude. Get off my face, dude. Just get off my face. Off of my face! And oh my god, the other day I was going through this elevator and I died so many times. It was so ridiculous. I was like, really? Again? Because I just died getting off the elevator. That's how pathetic it was. And uh, I gotta start be paying a little bit more attention to that because I don't want that stuff happening now. Now, there's no, no need to go to the other zone um, where you get the the Firekeeper Soul, because I've already gotten it. Which is actually a good thing, I think, to get that thing right at the start. Uh, simply because it makes it a lot easier um, for you to just uh, go after uh, Quilag. Because y you can just avoid going there at all. You can just avoid going through all that toxic stuff. And that stuff is annoying. Drink up. Well, I was actually going to attack that guy, but never mind. Don't have to. You can just bypass him and go straight in to the stuff that actually matters. Now from here, we're going to be going to the Undead Parish, upgrading our stuff. And after that, we are going to be heading off into An Orlando. And after Anne Orlando, we're going to go straight to the new content. It's just, again, I just, I just think that having the uh, right of kindling is just so useful early on in the game that I think that uh, once you feel confident enough to enter the catacombs, just go there, get the right of kindling, be done with it, and get out. Now then, let's go ahead and have a little chat with this fellow. 
He's not going to be very pleased with the conversation. There we go. A nice little parry to the face. That missed backstab. Ooh, and I get hit. There we go. There's the backstab as well. So parry, backstab. Lots of fun to be had. And now just slice him up. Slice him open. And I thought I was two-handing it. Well, for some reason, I pressed the two-hand button. I did a whole bunch of R1 attacks. and But it did it with only one hand for whatever reason. <laughs> and then it switched the two-hander. Okay. Nice little parry, if I can say so myself. Because it's, it's still one of my weakest points is the parry of delayed attacks. Attacks that actually take a while to get to you. Ooh, I was too far away for that. Should have been more careful. Ooh! Them fails. Fail harder, Rurikan, seriously. Stab! Stab the bastard in the face. He's gonna drop a dung pie so that you can have some food. How do you like them dung pies, boy? Want some dung pies? The other white meat. Dung pie, the other white meat. That's so bad. I'm not sure if that's parryable, because I think that was almost a perfect parry. Or maybe I just failed, but... Oh no, it is parryable. See? I just completely failed it the first time around. Now I say we go ahead and we backstab to finish him off. Ooh! And he's still alive, really? Fine, how about this? Poke! I really like the R2 attack on this thing. I'm really getting a... Because usually, I mean, most of my playthroughs, I um, I was just using really heavy weapons. And I, I believe that I'm repeating myself a little bit here. Um, but I was always using really heavy weapons, great swords, stuff like that. I never really had a weapon that had a thrusting attack most of my playthroughs. I mean, sure, Great Sword of Arthorius has a thrusting attack. It takes like half an hour to cast that damn thing. It's like, oh, I'm going to go ahead and do a thrusting attack. Just, just call me next year. I'll be finished by then. <laughs> so yeah, it's um, I'm u I'm used to slow weapons and just having a fast thrust like this. It's ah oh, man, I really want to take a build like this into New Game Plus, but it's probably not going to be this one because I mean this is ENB's build, right? This is tailored to ENB's taste. I'm going to make my own version of this because um, even though I really like the Baldur's Side Sword, there's a sword that I like even more, and um, I will tell you guys which one it is eventually. Not this playthrough, but eventually when I um, when I show you guys the char one of the characters that I'm working on, I will tell you which one of the swords is my favorite one. And then you guys will know. Then you guys will know. You will know the power of the dark side. Yeah, I'm slowly going insane. Don't worry too much about it. Although, unfortunately, my voice is slowly going away, as you guys can notice. That's because I already recorded like two hours of video already today before I started this session. So this is actually, I'm, I'm actually about to enter my third hour of consecutive recording. And this is one of the reasons why um, it's like, it's hard for me to do a lot of commentary and so much variety when I usually record 19 minutes at a time. It's just your voice goes away after a while and there's just nothing you can do about it. It really annoys me. I wish... I wish I could go on for longer with my voice, but the thing is, um, when I'm speaking English, I actually have to force my throat a little bit more, otherwise the accent comes out. And don't even ask me why, it's just something that I do naturally. I don't even, like, because um, a lot of people tell me they don't, they don't even know that I'm Portuguese, and I find that to be really cool. It's actually a lot of fun for me that people don't know that I'm Portuguese because I can hide my accent this good. But the thing is, in all honesty, this whole hiding accent thing, it forces your throat a lot more than when I'm you're just talking your native tongue. And I don't even know how to explain why it does that. It just does it. And it annoys me. It really does. Because sometimes I feel that I could go on for hours. Like right now, I could keep on commenting this playthrough for, I don't know, five more hours. Easy. But the thing is, my throat can take it. Disappointed. I can hardly wait to get started. 
Look at his face. He has this really sadistic face. He's like, I can't wait to get started. <laughs> just, he just has this sadistic look on his face. Look at him. Look at his face. It was abandoned in favor of the church that you passed through. There are paths leading from here to two forbidden plains. Sen's fortress and the Dark Root Garden. They attract all sorts of lunatics. No one as cultured as yourself. It's fine to be undead, but keep a level head, eh? <laughs> Also, something that you really got to be careful when you're close to Andre is that sometimes people tend to put their controllers down. I've done this mistake when you're close to Andre and with the PS3 controller, it's... Whoa, got to be careful. It's really easy to press R2 by mistake. So be really careful about that because it can just spoil the rest of your playthrough until you get to New Game Plus, which is really, really annoying. So be careful with that. But anyways... Let's go ahead and modify this bad boy and uh, reinforce the crap out of it. Well, probably not the crap out of it, but as much as we possibly can. Can take it all the way to plus nine. Plus ten is gonna take us back a couple of more. Um, Neither of us want to see you go hollow. A couple of more large titanite shards, but uh, we can just go on through. I believe I already have two attunement slots, or do I only have one? Oh, I only have one, unfortunately. So for now, I can't really. Um, Put power within yet. I was planning on putting power within as well. But uh, yeah.